This podcast is on the major blood vessels in Biology 12. Don't forget to use your skeletal notes to write notes as you're moving through this podcast and write down any questions you might have. The first blood vessel we're going to take a look at is the aorta. Now the aorta is the largest artery within our body and its role is to carry oxygen rich blood from the heart, um, specifically from the left ventricle. And I've just drawn an LV here so that you could see where the left ventricle is for your information. And you will learn later, this is the right ventricle. So this left ventricle is going to pump blood out of the, um, out of its chamber and into the aorta. So if you can see here my red cursor, this is the beginning of the aorta. Now the aorta will travel around down the back behind the heart and also comes out down here. So the aorta can be found in two places in a diagram. One would be here. This would be the aorta. The other place would also be, let's see if I can get this arrow to move in the direction that I like, right here. So that is also the aorta. Now it's going to deliver that oxygen rich blood to the body systems. And so all of the body systems, like going up to the head region up here, going down to the lower extremities down here. So it's going to carry the oxygen rich blood from the heart to the body systems. The second set of major blood vessels are the coronary vessels. Now I say set on purpose because in this lesson, when I say vessels, I'm really summarizing up to actually mean the arteries the capillaries, arteries, capillaries, and the veins. So this is the whole group of them. So the coronary arteries, they are the first branch off that aortic arch, which was just coming out of that left ventricle, this arch right here. So just the first branch off this arch are the blood vessels that will feed the heart muscle. And so on the front here, you can see, here would be your coronary arteries. The blue ones would be your coronary veins. So these are the vessels that feed the heart muscle itself with blood. Now you might be asking yourself, well, why can't the heart just get its oxygen and its nutrients from the blood that passes through its internal structures? Well, there's a couple reasons. First off, you remember the heart is a muscle and it's a very thick, hard working muscle. And therefore that muscle tissue is too dense and too thick. Additionally, the blood that's moving through the internal structures of it have the blood traveling too quickly to allow for a diff efficient diffusion of these nutrients, oxygen, glucose, amino acids to occur. The third major blood vessels are the carot carotid arteries. Now I do say carotid arteries here specifically because these do not have, there is no such thing as the carotid vein because the opposite of that bringing blood back down from the head region is going to be the jugular in which we're going to talk about next. So these carotid arteries, they are going to branch off that aortic arch and they are going to be the vessels that take blood up into the head region. Now the carotid arteries, they are very close to the surface. And because they are close to the surface, this is where we typically take um, our pulse. So a pulse can be taken here. So sometimes you see, might see when you exercise, you're either taking it from your wrist or you are taking it um, in your neck region. Um, and so this is where the pulse can be taken. Now in the pre previous diagram, I did give you a side view that was only showing as if we only had one um, carotid artery, but I did want to draw your attention to the fact that we do have two carotid arteries. There is a left um, carotid artery and there is a right carotid artery. They do come up both sides of your neck. So running alongside the carotid arteries are the jugular veins. Now their job is to take blood from the head region that was just delivered by that carotid artery and come back down towards the heart. Um, and it's going to meet up with the superior vena cava, which we're also going to talk about. And so here's some examples of the, of the jugular vein right here, as well as um, right here. So there are two jugular veins that take blood back from the head region down towards the heart. Now, an interesting fact about these veins is that they don't actually contain valves like most other veins in our body do because they can rely on gravity in order to bring the blood back down. You'll realize this when you stand on your head that your muscles will have to work a lot harder in your um, neck region in order to get that blood to come back. And you could get a little bit of pooling if on your head for too long. So please don't do that. 
Our next group of vessels, um, yes, they are a group because again, I'm talking about arteries and their capillaries and their veins um, of the subclavian. So the subclavian vessels, um, they branch off the aorta the arteries branch off the aorta and they will um, deliver blood to the chest region as well as the arms. Now the term subclavian, sub means under and clavian means clavicle and your clavicle if you don't know is this is your um, collarbone and so your collarbone is your clavicle and so what this means is that these vessels they run just under your clavicle and so they'll come down and provide blood to the chest um, region as well as take blood up from the chest region um, as well as move down to your arms and branches into um, the brachial the brachial arteries down here and so that, that's the ones that run down your arm that you're typically, when you're taking your blood pressure, you're taking your blood pressure from your, um, your brachial um, artery. Another thing about the subclavian vessels is this is where, from our last vodcast, we talked about the lymphatic system and we said the lymphatic um, veins and ducts, they end up taking all of that extra lymph and joining it back up with the circulatory system. And so this lymphatic vessel joins the circulatory system at this point, at the subclavian vein, where it can take all of that lymph in, which is mostly just water, um, and it, it will take it and bring it back to the heart. Although I don't ask you uh, directly any questions on the unit test about the mesenteric arteries, I do want to mention them here because when we do the fetal pig dissection, you are going to see that these small intestines are basically all held together by this um, this tissue called the mesentery. And so this inner part here, we call the mesentery and it holds all of the parts that long, 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 small intestine together. Now we've already discussed the hepatic portal vein when we were looking at the digestive system. If you remember, we had these structures that looked like this and in the middle of them were this lacteal and surrounding the lacteal were these blood vessels. Now in in sake of time, I'm just going to draw them all as blue, as though we know some are oxygen rich and some are oxygen poor, which um, are typically drawn as different colors. And so these capillaries here that were in the small intestines villa, um, they lead to the liver. So their role is to pick up the glucose and the amino acids and deliver them to the liver. So because they transport between the intestines and the liver, they are called a portal. And because they are associated with liver, we call it the hepatic portal vein. Now, if you remember back to your important functions of the liver, um, it had many functions, but three associated here that are important to do with blood is that the liver is responsible for regulating blood glucose concentrations. It's also responsible for recycling old red blood cells and detoxifying the blood. So all of this blood that comes in through our digestive system has to be filtered throughout our liver um, in order to, for the liver to do its job. So here's where I'd like you to pause and look at this diagram and see if you could identify where the hepatic portal vein is. Did you find it? It is D right here. So this right here, this is your hepatic portal vein. Now I'm also wondering, since there's a portal vein, there must be a hepatic vein and a hepatic artery and hepatic capillaries. See if you could identify also on this structure where the hepatic vein is. Yep, you got it, I hope. This is the um, hepatic vein. So notice that it doesn't have the portal in it. It is just the hepatic vein, which means it is going to take blood from this liver structure and deliver it back to the heart. Um, and it will also go through the inferior vena cava. So this was already quickly discussed, but just in case you need to write some notes on it, here's our next set, hepatic vessels. Again, vessels including the arteries, the capillaries, and the veins of the liver, hepatic. So it will carry blood to and from the liver. So this hepatic vein, it will take blood back up to the inferior vena cava, which we will talk about those major veins, vena cava, and the arteries are supplied blood from the aorta um, and they branch off from the aorta.
The eighth um, set of major blood vessels are renal. Now you've probably heard that term maybe from renal dialysis or renal failure. Renal means kidneys. And so um, the renal arteries will bring blood to the kidneys and the renal veins will take blood away from the kidneys to the heart. And again, it because the kidneys are in the lower part of the body, you are going to see that they are going to feed into this um, inferior vena cava here. So here are these two little kidneys. Yes, they are kidney bean shaped and they sit just on either side of your spinal column and their blood vessels have the prefix renal. Next set of vessels are the iliac vessels. Um, so I've shown you two different diagrams here. So the iliac vessels are the ones that branch off of um, the aorta and lead down to the leg. So the aorta branches into two iliac arteries, one to go down each leg, and the iliac vein, shown in this diagram here, the iliac vein um, will also um, comes from both sides of the leg and then empties into the inferior vena cava. Now, although I've shown you two different diagrams here, one red and one blue, please note that these could be basically overlaid each other because the iliac arteries and the iliac veins, they run alongside each other. So do the renal arteries and renal veins, as well as the coronary artery and coronary veins. So please note that although they're separated diagrams, they, they run alongside each other. Our second to last set of vessels are pulmonary vessels. Now, pulmonary means lungs, and so when we're talking about these vessels, we're talking about the system that delivers blood to the lungs and brings blood back from the lungs and heads it, brings it back to the heart. So in this diagram, we're just looking at this structure here because the other structure down here, this is the, this one down here, this is the systemic, which just means going to the body. And so in the pulmonary arteries, it is going to be taking blood from the heart and bringing it to the lungs. Now, if you think about this, the blood that leaves the heart and is going to the lungs is not going to have oxygen. It is going to be have little oxygen. And therefore we call this oxygen poor blood even though it is an artery, and this is a common mistake. So the arteries within the systemic system, these ones down here, they are oxygen rich. The arteries that are within the pulmonary system, they are oxygen poor. And so when the blood gets to the, um, the lungs, then it's going to drop off that carbon dioxide that it's brought to it and brought from the body systems, um, and it is going to pick up that oxygen. And where it does this in this structure called the alveoli. And so here are little bundles. I call these bundles of grapes. Now, these are alveoli. So all of your lungs, when it moves down from your trachea and into the very bottom part of your lungs, we have this structure called the alveoli. Now, this is a really significantly... Um, increased surface area here in order to allow the efficient exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen. So the blood moving here is going to drop off its carbon dioxide and it's going to pick up its oxygen. So therefore, bringing back to the heart, it's defined as a vein and it is oxygen rich. So here it will enter into your left um, ventricle sorry, into your um, left atrium, then into your left ventricle, and then head out to your body systems. And last but not least, running alongside the aorta here is the vena cava. Now we separate the vena cava into two separate um, veins. One we call the superior vena cava, which means it's just coming from the upper part of the body. So the upper part of the body includes the head, the chest, the arms, and it was bringing blood back to the heart. And this is oxygen poor blood. The inferior vena cava um, is going to bring blood for, that has come from the lower body. So this would have been renal emptied into inferior or iliac enter, entered um, emptied into inferior, hepatic also. So anything that's coming from the lower body enters via the inferior vena cava. Anything from the upper body is going to enter in via the superior vena cava. And I've just noticed a spelling mistake here, so I'm just going to correct this. This needs to say superior vena cava. And we often just shorten vena cava to VC. This brings us to the end of this vodcast. Um, please make sure that you can identify all of the structures within this diagram. Um, and don't forget to go to the um, blocked course and complete the vodcast assignment for major blood vessels.